Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you all. So today we're going to be coming once again back to Ashizu at Emancipator. Uh, this time around it is post MCS week number seven, where I end up going four and three, um, which is you know obviously I wanted to top, but uh, two of my losses were to my own misplays. So uh, definitely just going to try to be a little bit more clear-headed in my play and decision making moving forward. And then um, yeah, still definitely looking to get another top and ideally win on the MCS there, but. Uh, Adam Emancipator, I do think, was a very good call to take. Indeed, we did end up seeing a couple of Adam Emancipator lists topping, uh, and one in particular kind of like turned a bit on my head what I was thinking about Adam Emancipator. And that was the list that got top 16, and of course, because I'm never prepared like I should be, I don't have who was piloting that deck pulled up here. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, Master Circuit Series week number seven, and that was uh, Sizumu. Saizumu, S-I-Z-U-M-U, uh, went ahead and topped with a list that was pretty similar to this one. Um, one of the main things I noticed that both Adam Emancipator lists had that I thought was a bit win more was the uh, power tool Braver Dragon engine of Braver, and then of course the Smoke Grenade of the Thief, as well as the Rod of Silence Chaos as well. I thought that was a little bit win more when I tested. I didn't find myself pulling it off too often, but at the same time, there have been a decent number of times while playing where I have the ability to make a level 9 synchro, but not really anything else that's like super great in the moment. So I can definitely see how Braver could be more than just like another win more engine attack on to your end board, but even a you know good play in its own right in certain situations. And uh, one thing that's pretty easy to forget is this card also has a quick effect monster negate effect. So it's not even super terrible to end on uh, just braver dragon like during you know uh, going into your opponent's turn like it's still a very very solid option so i'm going to be doing more testing with it moving forward another th engine that i'm testing once again as the name suggests here is the prank kids engine with three roxies one dropsies in the main and then two or yeah two monsters in the extra deck one meow meow moo and one dodo dodo do so uh i kind of dismissed the prank kids engine before because i thought that it wasn't necessary because we had Cardahan to put water monsters in the graveyard. We didn't need Dropsies to do that anymore. And also having two extra deck slots felt like a lot, especially with everything I wanted to include in the extra deck. That said, I can't deny the strength of being able to like drop down a Roxies and then for one card immediately not only have a Link 2, but also still another Roxies. Like, that sets up a lot of plays, and it makes a lot of plays very easy to set up. Uh, it was something I noticed while I was playing um, all the previous builds before that didn't have Prank Kids at all, is that you had to go more out of your way to set up Appalooza, whereas with Prank Kids Roxies, you've already got the Link 2 and the Roxies on board. You just need one other monster, uh, usually your Block Dragon, to go into Appalooza, and then you're just like off to the races. So, um, yeah, I'm testing these engines in the deck once again, just to see how I feel about them. Another thing that I borrowed from Sizumu, Sizumu, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, I almost assuredly am, uh, was the idea to go up to three Foxy Tune. Uh, this was another great, uh, this is another engine that I really like and has been pretty great in testing so far. Uh, I like having multiple Foxy Tune because if your Xeomine gets negated, it's more likely that you'll have a Foxy Tune in hand. More Foxy Tune in hand means more ways to discard like Hellbex and Agidos that you end up drawing. Uh, and in general, um, it's not bad to be able to just put it out on the board because what you can do, and I hadn't even really thought about this beforehand, is like if you open Foxy Tune, uh, what you can do is you can use the effect to uh, just special summon Deer Note. And for whatever reason, I wasn't doing this beforehand. <laughs> I don't really know why I didn't think to do this, but uh, yeah, you just special summon Deer Note, and then you can use that to float into like an Asa, or to go into an Asa, and that can float back for the Foxy Tomb back on board. So I don't know. That's just like something I wasn't really thinking of, but <laughs> uh, I'm definitely gonna be thinking about it now moving forward for sure. Other than that, the deck is mostly the same. I've kept this roughly the same ratio of like excavatable rock monsters. I think we still have 17, right? There's three Cardahan plus three Guardian is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14, 17, yep. Uh, as far as what we took out of the main extra to make room for all this stuff, uh, the Miracle Ruptures are out. Uh, I do really like Miracle Rupture, uh, but it ultimately proved to be like the most cuttable card uh, to test out the uh, Prank Kids engine there. 
Uh, we took out one of the revival golems we were on two earlier. Uh, cut into Biru entirely, which I'm I'm not like super thrilled about, but I did honestly find that it was more often dead than it was actually like helping me, you know, catch up or come back. So um, I'm willing to test without it. And what was the other one? Oh, Doki Doki. We also took Doki Dokis out. Um, it's not bad at all, but like we definitely didn't have the room. Like if I wanted to put in more excavation targets, I would definitely put in like two or three Doki Doki. But I would have to cut like Foxy Tunes and maybe a Mudora. We're up back to, back up to two from one. I think we we're at one earlier. Um, but yeah, I, I have to cut some Foxy Tunes. I'm just I've really liked the Foxy Tunes. Um, excavating Doki Doki is really good, but at the same time, it's like it's not necessary. So I'm gonna be testing without it. And then in the extra deck, as far as what we cut, this was definitely a lot more difficult. Cutting stuff to make room for Braver and Meow Meow Mew and Dodo Dodo Do, but I end up cutting Borload Savage Dragon uh, because I don't actually end up going into it super duper often. If I have an 8, I usually either make Chaos Ruler or Dragite. Um, plus, you don't always have the Link Engrave to get the. Like, it's easier to have like the Water Monster Engrave than a Link Monster Engrave for Borload, so. Uh, we cut Borload, we cut Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller, even in this meta, I just don't find myself making it super often. Um, and I kind of haven't been impressed with it, to be totally honest. I think moving forward, once two limits are a thing, like, it's going to be a lot more necessary to have Dweller in decks like this. But in, even in this meta, against, like, the 60 card of Shizu pile decks, like, it's not bad to have by any means. Of course, it's good against them, but it's, it's like, it's not necessary. And, and it's, it's... It's something you have to go out of your way to end on, and it's usually not great to have to end on that. It's it's like, it's kind of win more, I guess is what I'm saying. That's how I felt my testing anyway. Uh, and then Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. This one I actually really struggled to cut, and really almost kept. Like, I honestly almost cut Sprite Elf instead. But Sprite Elf just has more utility. Uh, Underworld Goddess, though, is super great in this format. Um, and also just in general good for making with IP Mascarena to get around like towers and Psychic and Punisher and other stuff like that. Alright, so I think that's everything I wanted to cover as far as like updates with the list and where I'm at with testing it and all that fun stuff. So, I don't know, you know, if this is for sure going to be the list I take to MCS week number, what are we coming up on, 8? Yeah, I don't think this is going to be like, I can't imagine this will be the exact same list, I'll probably end up changing some amount of things moving forward, but uh, this is what I've been playtesting for the time being, and it's it's I've noticed the the differences between this kind of build versus what I was playing before, and can definitely see why a list like this got top cut. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and break down this list card by card, and um, yeah, we'll just take it from there. Uh, so we've got three Max C, one Prank Kids Dropsies, three Ad Emancipator Seeker, three Ad Emancipator Researcher, three Cardahan, the Hidden Gem of the Seafront, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, two No Punk Xeomine, three Gigantes, three Quakimir Guardian, one Revival Golem, one Tackle Crusader, three Prank Kids Roxies, two Ad Emancipator Analyzer, three Quakimir Supplier, three Rock Band Zeno Guitar, two Keldo, the Sacred Protector, one Mudor the Sword Oracle, two Kalbek the Ancient Vanguard, one Agido the Ancient Sentinel, one Awakening of the Possessed Nefarious or Archfiend, one No Punk Deer Note, one Block Dragon, three No Punk Foxy Tune, one Foolish Burial, two That Grass Looks Greener, one Smoke Grenade of the Thief, one Rod of Silence Chaost, two Emergency Teleport, and then finally two Called by the Grave. It's going to round out our main deck for the extra deck. We're on one Ad Emancipator is in Raptite, one Ad Emancipator is in Dragite, one Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic Magical Dragon, one Power Tool Braver Dragon, one Baron de Fleur, one Gallant Granite, one the Zombie Vampire, one Prank Kids Meow Meow Moo, one Prank Kids Dodo Dodo Do, one IP Mascarena, one Asa the Earth Charmer, Immovable. One Sprite Elf, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Appalooza Bow of the Goddess, and then finally one Axis Code Talker. And that's going to do it for the list. Now let's take a look at some gameplay. Alright, so our first duel of this video is going to be against Shizu Runic. I think I made a passing comment at some point uh, in a video that I didn't really think a Shizu Runic was going to be a quote-unquote thing. It is more of a thing than I thought it was going to be, but um, I still think it's a pretty mid deck overall, honestly. So... We're going to be going second here. Obviously not ideal against, you know, a deck like this, but um, our opening hand is looking pretty good, uh, relatively speaking. It doesn't have any disruption, but 
To be fair, this deck is built to be all gas anyway. Uh, rather than disrupt what our opponent does, our goal is more to just play through whatever they've got. Put it activates Golden Droplet to go ahead and get our Runic Fountain off there, or to get their Runic Fountain off there. Uh, but in turn, they ended up getting me a... Um, what did I end up drawing off of that? It was the blah, 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 Adamant's Pater Seeker, so that's going to add actually a lot more power to our turn one board there, as we have the Researcher here as well. Look at what we banished. Uh, really, the only notable thing was the No Punk Deer Note. That means our Punk Engine isn't online anymore, but that's fine. We don't need it with this hand anyway. Drawing card hand is a pretty great draw for turn. I'm going to start by activating the Foxy Tune, discarding Revival Golem to special the Zeamine, and after that I'm going to go for that Grass Look Screener. You might be wondering why I bothered playing Foxy Tune uh, and summoning Zeamine when, as I already said, my opponent already banished the Deer Note, so I won't have access to my Punk Engine this duel. The reason that I did this was to test for Ash Blossom and or possibly a Runic Dispelling the Runic decks don't really tend to play Ash Blossom, although some of them still do. It's still worth testing for. Uh, Runic Dispelling was a little bit more of what I was expecting. And I think after... Um, oh, but you know what? I didn't activate the Add Effect, which I definitely meant to. Oh, I thought I did during the actual game, but that would have actually that would have actually checked for Runic Dispelling. I guess to be fair, we still end up checking for the... Uh, what's it called? The um, blah, 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 um, Ash Blossom there. So we're going to mill here. Uh, we did end up milling some Keldos from our opponent. I didn't think they were going to be on the Ashizu engine. It's really hard to tell when your opponent just plays Runic stuff. If it's like Sprite Runic, if it's Sun Runic, if it's Ashizu Runic, whatever's going on. But um, given that they're not on 60 cards, I thought it was fine to mill them. But like I said, we're going to end up hitting a Keldo from them. And that's going to target our Block Dragon Keldo and Nibiru. That's fine. I'll just chain my Keldo in response and put back their other Keldo and maybe some Runic stuff. They're going to chain with a called by to just banish my block dragon, which I don't really know why they bothered activating Keldo if they were just going to do that anyway, but okay. That's totally fine. We don't need block dragon to make plays here. We actually don't either. We already have so much gas in our hand. So yep, here comes the Gigantes, and we then throw down the Researcher, or is it's what I think anyway. My opponent's actually got a Herald of Orange Light to negate and destroy it. They also put a Mudora in their grave, which is pretty annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, I still have a normal summon. I, not even like the card hand normal summon. That was just my normal summon for a turn. So I can still normal summon Seeker and activate the effect here. And yeah, we end up whiffing, which is definitely not ideal. But at the very least, we can go for Raptite here and activate this effect. Hopefully we get something. Opponent's going to chain the Rudora. Totally fine. They can put this stuff back. That's A-OK. -okay. They definitely should have saved this Rudora. Like, there's a very real chance where I find a way to get to Block Dragon again here, and they, if that were the case, they definitely would have wished that I had not done, they had not done that, rather. We end up finding a Prank Kid's Roxies. I'll use it to go into the Meow Meow Moo, but we've already milled or banished our uh, Dropsies, I think? Yeah, it's here in the graveyard, so I'm still going to activate the effect to see if I can get a better draw. And I actually can. I, the the analyzer is arguably better than card hand, but it turns out our opponent did actually have runic dispelling. So I think I did actually misplay by not activating the Zemian effect. Although I don't know why I didn't. To be totally honest, I definitely had yeah I had Foxy Tunes to add. This could have also been an older build of the deck that only had one Foxy Tune. That could explain it. But I thought I was on three Foxy Tune for all these games. I could be wrong. That's kind of a bad habit of mine, is switching up minor changes and builds a lot. I need to do that actually less often than I do, but... Um, you know, we can still incidentally make level 9, funnily enough, here. So that last card that our opponent drew off of their Runic Fountain, uh, with the Dispelling there, I get to go ahead and discard. It ends up being a Runic Destruction. Uh, from there, I'll battle with the Meow Meow Moo and then the Power Tool Braver. And the Rod of Silence is actually not irrelevant here against the Power Tool Braver. Uh, the equipped monster, uh, you know, it negates and destroys spells that target the equipped monster. So, uh, flashing fire and freezing curses are not going to be useful against this power tool braver here. So we're passing back to our opponent here. I'm really hoping they just don't draw another runic spell, and thankfully they don't. So they're just going to end up passing it back over to us. This gigantes is. A nice but still painful draw because as you can see after these direct attacks we're actually going to end up being 100 off 
from actually being able to finish our opponent off. And believe me, I spent a solid minute or two just scouring my extra deck and my graveyard and just trying to think like, is there really not a way I can come up with 100 more points of damage? And I'll go ahead and scroll through my extra deck and graveyard again here just so you all can see, but I really could not think of anything. Like, the only real thing I could even make for my extra deck was either IP or Asa, right? Uh, I'd have to link these two to go into Asa. My opponent does not have an Earth monster for me to bring back with Asa. If they did, that would be relatively easy, I think, to find lethal, but... Um, no, nah, it just wasn't there. It just was not there. I don't really have any graveyard effects. Oh, this is my extra deck, not my graveyard. I was like, wait, why didn't I summon Chaos Ruler? And that's not my graveyard. No, yeah, I don't really have any graveyard effects I can take advantage of here, so just unfortunately had to leave my opponent at 100 life points. Which is very painful. <laughs> it's extremely painful. I'm like, oh, I could very easily lose and that would really, really suck here. So they're gonna summon a Hugin. Uh, activating the, the Runic Fountain and the Hugin's effect as well, I believe. Yeah, I'm not gonna negate this. I don't really care if they get um, another Runic Fountain. That's totally fine here. They actually ended up discarding an Agido, uh, which I'm not, I don't think I'm able to negate. I think this can only negate... Yeah, it's just to negate monster effects on the field. So I'm not gonna be able to negate this Agido, but the mill is actually totally fine here. Uh, you can see I milled a Tackle Crusader which is huge, because now I can bounce back the Runic Fountain. And you might be thinking, but Hex, it's a field spell, they can just activate it again. Nuh-uh, let's read Tackle Crusader. Uh, you can, this turn, your opponent cannot activate cards with the same name as the card returned to this hand, or to the hand by this effect. So they will not only not only be, they, I said not only twice, they will not only not be able to, is what I meant to say, play the Runic Fountain again to have more advantage on this turn. They can't play the other copy they searched, and they won't be able to have Runic Fountain up for our upcoming turn at all. So the Tackle Crusader was huge and a very nice banish here, or a very nice mill, rather. Yeah, I think it was a huge mistake for my opponent to activate Agido and Kelbuck against me. My deck absolutely benefits more from mills than theirs does, and uh, I wanted to click on the graveyard to see if we milled Block Dragon, because that's the other thing, too, is, like, they could have very easily milled us Block Dragon. Uh, it didn't really end up mattering, although, oh, yeah, we can see here, actually, what we end up milling. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like they actually milled us our Block Dragon, but all the same, it's like, there's still Shufflers, right? There's always Shufflers that very much hurts their deck more than they hurt ours, so, I don't know. I don't really know why my, bothered, my opponent bothered to uh, mill there and end up helping us, but, eh, you know, we'll definitely take it either way, so... There's that game. Let's go and take a look at the next one. Our next duel is going to be against Branded Despia. Uh, they're not running the Ashizu stuff. They're on like 45 cards, but it's a pretty standard Branded Despia build. Uh, this game, from what I remember, was a pretty excellent back and forth. So I'm pretty eager to show this one. We're going to be taking the second turn, and we opened pretty abysmally, honestly, going second. Uh, Quakimir, Guardian Seeker, Dropsies, and Called By. Definitely not what we like to see. Um, of course, like I said before, our deck doesn't have a whole lot of disruption, but, you know, the point is to be all gas to have a lot of plays, but this hand does not have a lot of plays. It only has the Seeker, the Normal Summon Seeker and Activate play. So that's definitely rough, and on top of that, we're going to have to be playing through our opponent's uh, pretty full Despia end board setup as well. They've even got the Branded Lost to uh, search for, I imagine they're grabbing Mercurier here. Oh, and then they already have the Brandon Red in hand on top of that. It's brutal. They're going to end on a lot here. Now, interesting. They're making the Mirror Jade with the Brandon in red. And then they're actually using the Lubellion to end up making... An Albion. Okay. I'm actually, I want to pay attention this turn because it, like, I admittedly wasn't paying as much attention as I should have during the actual game itself. This was kind of one of those games where I saw I didn't open Disruption, so I just kind of started watching a video on my other screen. <laughs> and then I came back and I saw my opponent had, like, ended on this insane board, and I was like, whoa, wait, how'd they do all this on turn one? So, um, I've talked about this before, the skill ceiling for Branded is actually really high. Um... I see people who, like, just generally hate on meta decks will call Branded Despia Brain Dad Despia, and that always makes me laugh, because, like, really nothing could be further from the truth. Like, 
you know, an average Branded Despia player like myself would have just ended on, like, Mirror Jade, excuse me, plus Dragon Stapelia, plus probably, like, a Mercurier they grabbed off this Branded Lost, but my opponent here was actually able to end on Double Masquerade plus the Mirror Jade, plus all the other stuff, so it's very, very good on their part. Now, we did actually manage to top deck, like, literally the exact best card we could have here in that Grasslick Screener, but we do also have to keep in mind that we're up against Double Masquerade, and we're not going to be able to very easily get through this, but we're still going to try all the same. I'm going to start by Normal Sim the Quakira Guardian, just in case they do have Ash Blossom. I'll pay my 1200 to activate the uh, Grasslick Screener here. Now, uh, you'll notice I milled both Agido and Kalbeck, as well as Block Dragon. I did actually manage to mill the Block Dragon here. Um, I will activate the Zeta Guitar to get the Researcher, but you'll notice I did not activate Agido or Kalbeck. Uh, I didn't activate them because I do not have the life points to pay for those mills, uh, and also remove all my opponent's board and win this turn, which I am planning to do. But on top of that, I also, like, don't want to mill my opponent more stuff here to get back with Branded in Red or Banishment, whichever this ends up being. I should know what that is, because they searched and set it right during the end phase. Yeah, I was always going to be Branded in Red. I don't want them to potentially have other stuff to add back off Branded in Red besides just this Alibur. I don't want to mill them a tragedy and give them a free search, it, but it is mostly just the life points here. But yeah, I will definitely get back this Researcher uh, to have plays, because I don't really have plays without it, as I've already used my normal summon. Uh, we do have the Block Dragon. Block Dragon is actually not an activated effect, so uh, summoning it will not cost me life points. Searching off it, however, will. Opponent's going to try to use their Mirror Jade to banish my Block Dragon. Um, I'm definitely going to Quack Humor regarding that, and I'm definitely going to use this Called by to stop their Branded in Red as well. I think those are both absolutely worth uh, paying 1,200 life points apiece. That said, though, you look at my life points, I'm at 2,000. I only have one more effect I can pay for as long as both of these Masquerades are up. So here, what I'm going to have to do, and I'm, also our opponent's Mirror is going to trigger too, so we're going to lose our board during the end phase. Here, what I'm going to have to do is make the Baron de Fleur. I'm actually not going to get the block. I'm not going to activate the block dragon search yet. I plan on doing that later, uh, but I need to take care of these masquerades before I can actually make any progress on my board further past this. So, I'll make Baron battle over one of them, use Baron's effect to try to pop the other one. But I, of course, I forgot my opponent's got the branded opening engrave. So, that unfortunately isn't going to be enough here. Uh, I'll summon Asa using this Block Dragon. Uh, I will activate Block Dragon here. Just to make sure I get some more uh, stuff I can summon. Namely the Gigantes. I want to summon this and then go for the Nightmare Unicorn uh, to get this other Masquerade off the board. This will also keep it out of the graveyard, which means my opponent won't be able to just summon it back. They will be able to do that with the first Masquerade, and they're going to do that here, but... Um, yeah, at the very least, they'll only have access to one out of the grave and not both of them. Now, now I can pitch Cardahan, normal this researcher, special the seeker, and start excavating. Now that I have 200 life points left. Uh, another thing we're going to have to play through here is the fact that our opponent's going to have a Mirror Jade board wipe during the end phase here. So that is yet another thing we're going to have to keep in mind. Summoning the Quakimir Guardian, and we'll go for the Adamantipator Risen Raptite. I do actually end up making a pretty huge misplay that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, it was a minor effect of a card that I end up forgetting. So I've got a couple Quakimir Guardians, and then I'm then going to go for the Chaos Ruler. Use that to just get more mills. Basically, I want to just get more fodder for my Block Dragon here. Summoning the Block Dragon again, now we're going to go for Zombie Vampire and use that effect, detaching of course the Block Dragon. We set up a Keldo Engrave, which is always nice. Then I go for the IP Masquerina, and then I use all four of these to make Appalooza. My thought process was that I wanted to have a four material Appalooza that also couldn't be destroyed by card effects. Where I misplayed though, uh, and I didn't realize this until after the game, the minor effect I forgot about was a Block Dragon. For some reason, I always have it in my head that Black Dragon only protects itself from being able to be destroyed by battle and card, or just by card effects, but 
it's actually all rock monsters, so I could have synced for a Dragite and still had both my Quakir Guardians in play alongside a Block Dragon. Block Dragon would have not only protected them all from the Mirror Jade effect during the end phase, but Block Dragon, and this is something I, I'm notoriously awful about forgetting, uh, Block Dragon also protects Quakir Guardians from being destroyed by their own end phase effect as well, so I could have actually ended on like a spell trap negate, I could have bounced back my opponent's Masquerade um, with Dragite's Excavate effect, and I could have had two Quakimir Guardian, uh, all of which would have lived instead of just the Appaloosa and Block Dragon uh, that we see here. Um, having the Appaloosa out does allow us to negate the Albion, though, um, so there is that. But, I mean, I was honestly just doomed to fail here because my opponent still has the Despia. Uh, theater on the board, which makes it very easy for them to go for Guardian Chimera, uh, which is very easily chain blocked, but given that they have all these different effects, and also I can't even respond to it anyway, so that's going to be a defeat for me here, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was actually possible to win this game or not. It's 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 honestly just pretty likely that it wasn't, but uh, we were still able to play pretty far through those two Masquerades, and at the same time, I... I, I think we might have been able to do it had we set up our board and just been generally more mindful of Block Dragon's effect uh, a little bit more so than we were. But we still have a couple more games to take a look at. Let's dive straight into the next one here. All right, this game we're going to be up against the Chaos, Necroface, Shizu, Mill, Deck, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're playing against here. We're going to be taking the second turn, so we're going to have to hope to try to avoid the deadly FTK. I'm uh, going to throw out Maxi during the draw phase, which might not necessarily be the best idea against 60 card decks if it's a mill deck like this, but uh, our opponent's actually going to pass here. Now, obviously, I don't know what's in my opponent's hand, but unless my opponent has a bricked up dead hand, if they just pass because I played Maxi here, that was a huge misplay on their part. Uh, this deck can definitely mill, my opponent's deck rather, can definitely mill 60 card decks even without them activating Maxi. And, uh, I don't know. A lot of the 60 card decks are also not playing Nibiru. In fact, the majority of them aren't. Uh, and from what I've seen, anyway, the majority of them are not playing Nibiru. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, again, my opponent's hand could have very easily just been dead here. But I wanted to talk about this. Like, if you're playing a deck like 60 card, like, Mill, and 60 card decks in general, like, there are some times where you have to be willing to push through Maxi on turn one. But again, especially given the deck my opponent was on, if they don't have the Mill here, then, or if they don't have, what am I trying to say? Unless their hand was dead, I can't imagine why they wouldn't play into Maxi there. That's the main point I was trying to get at. So, who has got a Maxi for me? I'm gonna chain an e telly to it, um, but I am absolutely gonna push through my opponent's Maxi. Now, to be fair, at this point, I don't know exactly what kind of uh, 60 card pile deck they're on. So, I'm just gonna throw out the Quakimir Guardian here, just in case they do end up having something. But, from there we do a pretty standard Punk line. Oh, we even get to bin our Keldo, uh, going into the Chaos Ruler here. And then, of course, we also get the Deer Note effect to bring back the Foxy Tune to go for the Zombie Vamp here. Well, we might not even end up going for Zombie Vamp. Because we're under Maxi, I kind of want to do this in as few summons as possible, so I'm actually going to try to use those to go for game here. Now, I know I see that normally I don't activate the Millers like Keldo and Agudo against another 60-card deck, However, in this situation, where I'm playing into the Maxi and it's turn two, so like, regardless of if I manage to succeed or not, the duel is going to end on this turn. Like, this turn will be the deciding turn of the duel. So, in that regard, I'm really not as anxious about putting stuff in my opponent's graveyard. Also, on top of that, like I pointed out earlier, we got a Keldo in the graveyard very early, so... Um, in that regard, I'm also not super duper scared if I end up milling something like Fairy Tale Snow or a Miller, or not Miller, uh, a Shuffler. I can just force that with my Shuffler right off the bat. Poe doesn't really have anything of the sort, though. We didn't mill anything like that, so I'm just going to throw out the Researcher. We whiff on it, but it's fine. I'll finally just use Foolish Burial on the Black Dragon. Poe's going to special the Agido here. This felt like a bait to try to get me to act my Clocking or Guardian, or maybe they were just like. Realizing I was going to go for lethal and just wanted to have like a body on board to defend with, but I'm just going to go for Baron, use the effects to uh, hold up a negate, uh, and also the effect to destroy this Algido. And then, honestly, from here, I'm just going to go ahead and move to battle phase and swing for lethal. I've already got lethal on board, 
Playing into my opponent's board only gives them more of a chance to draw Nibiru and or another out. And uh, even if they do have some way to stop me from attacking with Lethal, I still have all the stuff Block Dragon Search that I haven't used yet, as well as Block Dragon Stolen Grave. But opponent doesn't have anything, so that's pretty rad for us. We get to just take the win right there. We have one more game to look at. Let's go ahead and go straight into it. And our final game for this video is going to be against Tri Brigade Sprite. I actually keep meaning to go back to that deck more at some point. Maybe I should do that next. I just, you know, until we get Sprite Sprint into our Pit Knight early, that deck just, like, it just feels incomplete. You can tell it's incomplete. Like, it really just needs another solid Link 2 to go into. But anyway, we're once again going to go second here. This Golden Second Hand is looking a little bit better than some of our other ones did. We can Special Analyze our Normal Guardian. And then we have a couple of Extenders in the form of two Gigantes to go into after that. We did draw one of our Garnets in the form of Rod of Silence Chaos, which is actually one of the reasons I, I'm not a huge fan of the Braver. I'm not, it's not that I'm overall not a huge fan of the Braver engine. One of the reasons, though, that I tend not to like it uh, as much is that I don't like having the two equipped spells in the main deck. Even though your deck is 60 cards, like you do still actually need those main deck slots, and um, they are, of course, bricks to not only draw, but also excavate off of the at Emancipators as well. So, I don't really, I don't know. Our opponent had like a pretty solid setup here, but it doesn't really seem like they ended on too much, honestly. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just remember when I was making my combo guides for this, this deck and, and just in general trying to come up with more stuff. I think what ended up happening was that Maybe they two locked themselves a little bit too early. I don't know. It's it's been a little while since I've played this deck, so um, I couldn't tell you. And also, I, to be fair, wasn't paying as much attention as I should have been. So couldn't tell you off the top of my head where they went wrong here. But my opponent's end board should definitely have been better than this. Like it definitely sh they should have more disruption than just Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lords. So like, even though their board is full and it looks scary, like even if their last card is the Revolt, they search. They don't have enough room to play it. Like. They don't have an IP. I don't get why they didn't go into IP Masquerade here using like Blue and Jet at the very least. Like it's just, I don't know, it's a little... I guess they would have had to have used uh, Keros. Well no, because they summoned back Keros with the Elf last. That was the last thing they did, so yeah. They could have used Blue and Jet and gone to IP and then used the Elf to put the Keros somewhere else, but... Ah, you know what, whatever. I mean, if our opponent wants to... Well, <laughs> I don't think they want to miss... Excuse me, I don't think they want to misplay, but... I guess I should say, if our opponent is going to misplay, we'll take it. I mean, I won't argue against it, but... Anyway, here my opponent's going to use the Ancient Warrior's Oath Double Dragon Lord effect. going to respond with the Kwakimuro Guardian to negate and destroy that. I definitely need my Analyzer on the field. Turns out they actually put back their own Revolt. They searched off Bear Rum and kept their Sprite Starter, likely realizing they wouldn't have enough you know, space on board to use the Revolt. And yeah, we end up getting to a uh, starter, or my opponent ends up getting to starter for red here, but at the same time, I can just go into Baron and... <laughs> oh my god, so actually, it's kind of funny, right? What I should have done is just activated Baron's effect. I don't know why I didn't just do that. Oh, because, you know, they could have sacked this and then negated and destroyed the Baron. But even then, I could have just gone the Gigantes into... No, but then I wouldn't have had another monster on the board, right? And I don't have enough Ursa Grave, so yeah. That was kind of the whole thing here, is like, I thought about using Baron's effect to activate it on the red, but then I'm like, you know, then red can negate and destroy Baron. I guess to be fair, then I just use Baron's effect to negate and destroy red. And then I summon both my Gigantes, go into Gallant Grant. Okay, so I could have done this all main phase one. The main thing I wanted to see with this replay is I wanted to see if I really had to battle here. When I was actually playing this duel, I had it in my head that, like, I wasn't able to do this without moving to battle phase. Oh, I guess this was the other thing was making sure that we use the Baron Negate on the Tri Brigade kit to make sure they didn't end up with anything. Although, I think I could have just OTK'd. Like, the kit search doesn't matter here. They're, they're not going to search anything that will disrupt me, so. Yeah, I played this a little bit. Weirdly enough, I played this in a greedy way where I wanted to get rid of their whole board and then make my own. When, yeah, looking back, I, I could have just made. Like, I could I could have done this play uh, beforehand where we go for the Asa using the Gallant Granite and the Baron and summon the Block Dragon and then we can link it off. 
Yeah, I could have done this all made phase one and just won this turn, I think, but either way, we're gonna use the battle phase to pick apart our opponent's board and then go for more of like a turn one kind of end board. I'll just fast forward at this point, because at this point it's pretty standard stuff. I should have used card of him to summon Clockyum or Guardian here. I don't well it's because I already used the analyzer is why I did it. But either way, it's not like the Guardian's going to end up sticking around. We're going to end up using it as a material. Although, again, to be fair, I could have just used Block Dragon and summoned in that would have protected Guardian from its own effect as well. Again, I always... I need to be more mindful of that. Oh, and now we that we excavated up Roxy's, I mean, now we can just, like... Yeah, go for our whole Prank Kids engine. Pull all that out. I'm actually going to use those to go into Sprite Elf in order to bring back a Tuner and then go for a level 8 Synchro here. Just gonna make a Drag Guy and make this pretty easy. We should have, or we have the Drop Season Grave for a Water Monster, so we can use the card to hand here. Make a Block Dragon, and then there we go. We even have the Rock to reveal during the end phase, even though we didn't necessarily need it. At this point, the opponent's just gonna top deck and... Oh, I thought they were just gonna concede right away, but... Looks like they are gonna try to fight through it. Yeah, the Mannequin Cat, I was like, I don't really know what's going to come down here, so I'll just use this now. But of course, I ended up inadvertently triggering the Mannequin Cat. Because I didn't realize it was any special summon. I thought it was specifically from Grave for some reason. Of course, when I get the kit, once that activates her effect, and then at this point, yeah, then my opponent's just going to concede. Okay, I was going to say, at some point, they got a they gotta scoop, right? So... So there it is, that's my latest round of testing with the Shizu at Emancipator. Managed to capture some pretty good games, and uh, yeah, just hope you all enjoyed them there. And yeah, that's about all I've got. Let's just go ahead and move now to our outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me, uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way, so if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there, for just 5 bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack, uh, you'll find a lot more value in that pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.